Well, hi everybody, and welcome to NCC's Grab Bag Season Three, Episode One. Uh, today is January fourth. This is scheduled to be released next Sunday. I hope that you all had a great holiday. As you can see behind me, all our decorations are down and put away, and we are just heading into deep winter. <laughs> I mean, I have every light on that I can possibly put on to light this place up because it is so gray outside. <laughs> Pittsburgh in January and February, it just seems like you live on the dark side of the moon. <laughs> you know, we, or you're up in Alaska where they have six months of darkness. I don't know. Maybe it's poetic justice of some sort that in December you had an opportunity to see the Aurora Borealis if you wanted to because you feel like you're so far north. Now, if you think I'm growing, you see those bumps? I just put this shirt on, didn't get rid of the hanger knob. So don't think I'm growing wings or anything like that in my back, okay? It's just one of those days. It's a Monday, and I'm like everybody else trying to crank up. Joy did her first day back at school. She's at her first day back at school after the holidays, and Everybody's just kind of <laughs> dragging a little bit. But the Lord is good, and the joy of the Lord is our strength, and uh, we are very blessed to have the Lord to lead us through 2021. Let me pray before we start this lesson. God, thank you so much for bringing us through uh, these holidays. Um, Thank you for the promise of a new year, even though it's just kind of like a calendar thing. We do thank you that uh, we can anticipate that you're going to walk with us, that you'll be beside us, and that we can have faith in you, that we can trust you. And as we go into this lesson, I pray, Father, that um, it will be an encouragement to the body of Christ at Norwin Christian Church. And I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen and amen. Okay, I got my cheat sheets down here to keep me focused a little bit. So let's see. This will be released on January 10th of the new year 2021. And so even though we're going to be 10 days into the new year, or maybe even more than 10 days, if you don't open this on Sunday the 10th, I want to begin this uh, season of grab bag, this these six episodes at least, um, with a New Year's encouragement for you, uh, focused on the Word of God. But I'm going to ask you first, if you would, to please sign in by clicking on the button down below. And like Pavlov's dogs, you know, when you hit that button, I get a free cookie treat. <laughs> that's not, woof, woof. No, that's not, that's not true at all. But it, we would appreciate it if you would hit the button and sign in, okay? Same rules as before. If I mess up, I mess up. If my nose gets itchy, my nose gets itchy. I'm not stopping. I'm not trying to make this professional, but I do want to make it hopefully effective because we're talking about the Word of God and that deserves our best. So let me start off with a question. How valuable is the Word of God? How valuable is the Word of God? A follow-up would be, is the Bible different than any other book you can read? Now, I'm not going to turn this into an apologetics class about proving that the Bible is indeed the inspired Word of God. We're going to begin, actually, with that assumption among us. I'm just going to assume, you know, I'm a believing Christian, I'm a Bible teacher, you're listening to this, and so I'm going to assume that all of you, if not 99% of you, already believe that the Bible is the inspired Word of God. But well, let, let's look at how the Bible speaks to its own value, and we're going to do that by using a few verses with which you may already be familiar. Now, Psalm 119, Psalm 119 is a psalm about the power and the value of God's word, or God's law, because it was Old Testament. And David's creativity in writing Psalm 119 is absolutely amazing. 
because this psalm is what's called an acrostic poem. It has 176 verses that are divided into 22 stanzas. And each of those stanzas begin with a consecutive letter in the Hebrew alphabet. There are 22 letters in that alphabet. And so each stanza begins with a consecutive letter in the alphabet. It's, it's an amazing, amazing psalm. But here are a few verses underscoring the value of scripture from the psalm. Right at the outset, Psalm 1. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and who seek him with all their heart. So to know the word of God, to, to learn the word, to pursue God through the word, leads to a life that is blessed. And then Psalm 119, 11. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Uh, when I was a little lad, I learned it as thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So someone has said that this book, the Bible, will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. <laughs> Pretty clever. This book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. Your word have I hid in my heart, so I don't sin against you, God. In other words, if I get the word of God in me, it makes me more uh, sin impervious, maybe. I don't know. It just it strengthens me in godly living so that hopefully my sin level is dropping, okay? Now, that's not the whole purpose of studying the Word of God. You know, we just don't want to lower our uh, sin-tolerant level, or so to speak. Um, you know, we're, we're, it's not all about just being less sinful. We study the Word of God because we want to know God. We want to be more like God. And being more like God then will make us um, more sensitive to knowing what God does not like and make our hearts and our spirits more willing to not sin. Now, here's a different angle that I heard years ago. And I just remember in the conversation, somebody saying that they had spoken to a rabbi, and I don't even remember who said this, but it's interesting to me that this rabbi said that when you look at this verse, your word have I hid in my heart so that I don't sin against God, you can look at it like I put God's word into my heart so that I don't sin, or you can also look at it like your word have I hid in my heart because if I don't do that, I am sinning against God. It is my godly responsibility to incorporate God's word into my heart and mind. And so your word have I hid in my heart, God, so that I won't sin against you. Because if I don't, then I am sinning against God. Does that make sense? So there are two inflections there. And go back and listen, and I think I hope you'll see the difference. There are two inflections in looking at Psalm 119, verse 11. But well, we're going to move on. In uh, Psalm 119, verse 105 is a very familiar verse. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. This is the value that the word of God gives to itself. It is a, a light for our paths. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, we read, For the word of God is living and active, and sharper than any two-edged sword, even penetrating as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and even the intentions of the heart. Now, the Greek word judge simply means it's able to provide discernment. 
And to discern means to perceive or to recognize something. So what the Hebrew writer is saying is that the Word of God provides a dimension of godly wisdom to a believer's thinking and perceptions that can only come through the Spirit of God. And this is in line with Paul's teaching in Romans 8, that those who walk in the flesh cannot discern the things of the Spirit. See, the Word of God gives insight into thinking God's way and in perceiving others' thoughts in a spiritual light. It's almost like adding another dimension to your thinking because when you're walking in the flesh, you cannot discern and understand the things of God. But when you walk in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives you some wisdom and some insight into why people do what they do, what they're thinking, how to handle certain situations. We get that through the Spirit working through the Word. In 2 Timothy, Paul writes, all Scripture is God-breathed. And that's what inspiration means. All Scripture is inspired and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the value of the Word of God, it's valuable for teaching. You know, we get a lot of just biblical knowledge. You can also get historical knowledge and um, other types of knowledge from the Bible. But it is also good, uh, Paul writes, for repute, reproof. Um, the word I was going to say was rebuke. You know, what does it mean to rebuke? Well, you buke once and you buke again, so you rebuke. Is it? Nah, reproof or for rebuke. The word actually means to expose, to measure self against. In other words, the Word of God provides a moral standard by which you can measure your heart, your life, your thinking. And when you see that measure, like James says, don't look at it and then just like looking in the mirror and turn away. Look at it and say, now, how can I change? How can I allow God to change me? The Word of God is good for reproof or for rebuke. The Word of God is good for correction, and correction simply means to make upright again. It helps you, like I said, as a measuring mark to see where you're off the mark, and it helps you and gives you instruction on how to bring your life back in plumb, so to speak. It's good for instruction. The Word of God is good for instruction, and the word here carries with it the idea of rearing or raising a child to maturity. So in other words, the Bible doesn't just provide religious knowledge. It doesn't just provide knowledge about God. It provides instruction on how to grow to maturity in Christ. And then finally, Paul says that the Word of God um, thoroughly equips people for every good work. The, the Greek word artios means to be qualified or fully ready or perfectly fit. God is shaping us and molding us through his word so that we become perfectly fit servants to be used for good works for which God created us, as Paul mentions in Ephesians chapter 2. Okay, now another value of the Word of God. Matthew 24, 5, Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word will never pass away. How valuable to a person's spiritual birth, growth and maturity, godly thinking and direction does the Word of God see itself. <laughs> you know, this is eternal input good for instruction and reproof and training and righteousness and all of the things that we've already talked about. Because my time is, you know, they told me I need to make these things shorter, and so I'm trying the best I can. Um, so I don't want to go back to see those, but just think about what we've already talked about. How valuable to a person's spiritual growth 
to their godly thinking and direction, does the word of God see itself? The answer to that question is absolutely invaluable. So question number one that we began with is, how valuable is the word of God? Now, second question that we'll use for the rest of this time together is this. How valuable is the word of God to you? How valuable is the word of God to you? Now, I can tell you that like a dentist tells us that brushing and flossing are valuable to us, we are the ones who decide whether or not to follow that advice and avoid cavities and problems. We could agree, yeah, it is absolutely necessary. It is absolutely vital. But we're the ones who decide whether it is vital and valuable to us. And so in the same way, the Word of God is invaluable to our spiritual health. But you or I determine whether it is valuable enough to motivate us to some sort of productive action. Here we are at the onset of another year. And people are making resolutions or have already made resolutions for self-improvement. And I would guess that a large number of the resolutions involve improving or changing externals, like a person's weight or a location or a vehicle, or even a job. And many of the resolution, resolutions that people made have already been broken, you know, 10 days into the year. Well, no, today's the fourth. So probably a lot of them have already been broken in the fourth day of the year. Well, I have a resolution for us as Christian men and women, a resolution that will have great impact on your home, on your heart, on your workplace, on your family, on your neighborhood, on your community, and even on Norwin Christian Church. I would like to challenge each of us to eat better this year. In fact, I challenge us to eat better and to eat more than ever before. You see, we make plans to feed and sustain our physical selves, well, the eating I'm talking about is making plans to feed and sustain our spiritual selves by eating spiritual food, eating more of it, and eating better than ever before. Feasting on the Word of God, because the Word of God is a smorgasbord of wisdom and truth to strengthen our souls. Hopefully, we'll make decisions to become more like Jesus in 2021. Uh, Jesus laid it out there. I mean, he just put it right out there when he said, those who love me will obey my commandments. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. So according to Jesus, obedience is a measurement of our love toward him. But here's the truth. The truth is if we want to be like Jesus, to show him that we love him, then we must first think like Jesus. We can't think like Jesus, however, without God's word speaking to our spirits and giving us spiritual discernment and transforming us into the image of Christ. We can't make ourselves like Jesus by our own efforts. Only God can bring that change. And I believe the Bible teaches that the Spirit transforms us by the measure of God's Word that we ingest into our hearts and minds. Now, I told you, you may think, okay, Rob, you're telling me that I need to invest more and do more with the Bible, but then you tell me only God can change us. Yes, we can't change ourselves by our own efforts, but we can make the effort to open ourselves up to the Word of God, to the Holy Spirit, to allow God to transform us and to change us. And God has promised he will do that. He who began a good work in you will continue to perfect you until the day of Christ Jesus. God will continue to work in you if you make yourself available to him. And one of the ways that you make yourself available to him, that you grow in Christ, is by getting more and more of the word of God into your mind and into your heart. If we know God better through the Bible, then God, through the Bible, will make us better. If we know God better through the Bible, then God, through the Bible, 
will make us better. So with that said, and trying to keep this session shorter in time, here are a few suggestions for you. Number one, I hope that you will find at least, at the very least, a good devotional to use for this year. But don't merely read devotional thoughts that someone else wrote about the Bible. I mean, that's a good thing, but don't settle just to read devotional thoughts. In other words, don't settle for books about the book. I'm working my way through a Max Lucado book called Never Alone. And every day, because it only requires about probably 10 minutes to read a chapter, and, and he's such a, an encouraging, easy to understand writer, I, I'm using that book as a supplement to reading the Bible. But I won't read just that book, even though he uses scripture, because he's writing a book about the book, and we want to read the book. Last year in June, I began this book that says Ever Faithful. It's a devotional by David Jeremiah. And I began, like I said, in June each day has a title and then a scripture underneath and then a devotional thought. Well, that, that's great. That's a good supplement. And I'm going to read <laughs> The, the, the first half now up and through through June. I didn't get it till June, so I read for six months, and now I'm in the beginning part. But I want to read the Bible, too, not just a devotional book. Have any of you heard about the man who wanted to catch a mouse, but he didn't have any cheese to put in his trap? And so he decided instead of the real thing, he would put a picture of cheese into the trap. And so he set the trap and put it out that night. When he woke up in the morning, in the trap was a picture of a mouse. <laughs> you know, he didn't get the real thing because he didn't put the real thing in the trap. So, you know, you can get books about the book, but it's better that you read the real thing. Reading someone else's thoughts about the Bible is like reading someone's restaurant review and thinking that you are now fully nourished. If anything, the restaurant review should make you hungry and want to dine at the venue that's reviewed. So should a good devotional make you hungry for the actual meat of the word. The power of the Holy Spirit is in the word. So if you're going to dine, dine at the, at the word of God, not at somebody's restaurant review about the word of God, okay? So at the very least, a good devotional to use. Secondly, uh, you could purchase this book. It's called Core 52 by Mark E. Moore. And this is a book that I'm using this year, <laughs> along with a couple other things that I've mentioned. The subtitle reads, A 15-Minute Daily Guide to Build Your Bible IQ in a Year. So the stated purpose is to help build Bible IQ, to move you from Bible curiosity to Bible confidence. Because a lot of people have curiosity about the Bible, but when it comes to the Bible, they don't have a lot of confidence about it. And so the goal of this book is to move you from Bible curiosity to Bible confidence. And again, it talks about taking 15 minutes. That devotional from David Jeremiah takes about five minutes, if that, to read the scripture and to read his little devotional that's encouraging. 15 minutes a day on this, 15 minutes a day on reading the Locato book. I usually read the Locato book at the end of my work day, just before I go from the office downstairs. And, uh, you know, it just uh, kind of puts a nice parentheses on the end of my work day. So number three thing that you can do, you can always find a Through the New Testament in One Year plan in print or online. Now here's the New Testament, the One Year reading plan. And this is one that I used in 2018, and then I had a copy of it as well in 2019. So I read through the New Testament, checked off each 
time that uh, you know you finished in a day. And this came from the Moody Church. I, I don't even know where I got it, but I decided to use it, and it was good. And so you can use that. Number four, um, you can find uh, through the Bible in one year. And here's a through the Bible, one year Bible. I mean, it's pretty fun. And I use this. I marked each year that I use this. So I have 96, 97, 98, 01, 07, 11, and 12. So I use that. I don't use it every year because I, as you can tell, I make variety of things. But find yourself a one-year Bible. And they help you read through the Bible in one year. And then finally, um, you can use an online plan. Um, let's see. There is, you know, you can get an app. Well, you can't really see to download to your phone. That's not very good. Well, okay. But you can get an app. Uh, you can get the U version. I have the U version Bible app. Okay, and I was going to show you some things, but I can't. So I'll just talk here. Um, it provides various topical reading plans, uh, the Bible in different versions, a daily Bible verse reminder that you can set to show up on your phone at a certain time. Mine shows up at four o'clock in the morning. So when I get up in the morning and I grab my phone from the charger at night, first thing I see is a daily Bible verse. You can have, it has scriptural memes, scriptural videos. There's just so much packed into that Bible app on your phone. And everywhere you go, you've got the word of God with you. So when you're sitting in a doctor's office and you're bored, sitting on a bus, whatever, you know, open it up and you can read. And the thing is, last year, I just sat back and I had a plan for reading through the Bible in one year. And uh, let me get here. At any time, you can get the, the well, I can't do it. You can get the scripture. I think you can hear it. And there is a really nice, English man with, or an English sounding man. Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, With the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Okay, there you go. Of all Genesis 4, because I'm reading through the Bible in a year, or he's reading through the Bible in a year. And of all things, you know, Adam made love to his wife. Well, there you go. So, but, boy, um, Genesis 4, and you could hear the guy reading. And so when I was reading through the New Testament, I could just sit back and I could just let him read the New Testament to me. But it's also on the screen, so if you read while he's reading to you, I mean, then you're getting, you know, a double whammy, so to speak. So it, there are just so many things that you can do with a Bible app on your phone. And listening to a guy read the scripture to you is gonna take less than five minutes a day. So there are just so many tools to keep us from biblical illiteracy. And I mean, so many, there's no excuse for being biblically illiterate. And I've tried to give you four or five different options that you can use. Combine them if you want, that's what I do. And I spend about an hour, maybe an hour 15 in my devotional time with prayer and listening to the scripture and uh, meditating and thinking about the scripture. When it all comes down to it, the one critical cog in the machine is you. You know, they say that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And I'm not calling you a horse. Nor would I call you a cap. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I got all kinds of jokes. Um, I wouldn't call you a horse. But I did hear somebody wisely say one time, you can't lead a horse, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. But you can salt his oats. You can make him want to eat. And that is why I chose this topic 
for the first one out of the shoot in New Year's 2021. I hope hearing about the value of the Word of God for your spiritual life, for your life overall, and then challenging you to act upon the value that's there by grabbing a discipline of some sort and getting, as I've said before, getting into the Word of God so the Word of God can get into you in 2021 will be like salting your oats. I hope that to salt your spiritual oats, to prod you, to spur you on, oh no, not another horse analogy. Yeah, to spur you on to a stronger year of spiritual growth in 2021. You know, you can tell a child is growing and maturing when she no longer has to be spoon-fed by someone, but has learned to feed herself. And at NCC, we hope you never tire of learning by joining the Church Fellowship for Corporate Worship. But obviously also, we hope that you are motivated disciples wanting to learn on your own. And I think that you are. Otherwise, why would you even be here listening to a grab bag lesson? And so I want to applaud you. I want to thank you. And I want to encourage you to keep up the good discipleship work. Get into the Word. Let the Word get into you. You can add more spiritual vitamins to your 2021 daily diet by grabbing the reins. What? Another horse reference, Rob? What's up with all the horse stuff this morning? Well, anyway, grab the reins and go right into the source, the scripture itself, and trust the Holy Spirit to instruct and lead you. Now, that is what millions and millions and millions of people have done throughout all of history. That's why, one of the reasons I believe that the Word of God was inspired and given to the church. God wants you to know Him. God wants you to know His will. The Holy Spirit, the Bible, and you. Now, that's a great trinity for growing in Christ. Of course, if you have any questions, you know, as you study the Bible, if you have any questions, let me know, and I'll, I'll point you to Terry, or I'll let Russ Grant and hand, handle every question that you have. <laughs> Obviously, I'm just kidding. I'll be happy to do my best to find scriptural help. A question you have may be a challenge for me and an opportunity for me to grow. Iron sharpens iron, so we can grow together in that way. Let's each commit ourselves to getting into the Word of God and making this year the year of the Bible for us. Okay? Hey! High five. That's Grab Bag Season 3, Episode 1, over and out. God bless you. <laughs> I love you a lot. Bye-bye. Let me see. How do I stop that thing?